Um, our, our mission is a safer community, of course, uh, and our mission is to protect life, property and environment from fires and other emergencies. Our mission comes immediately from the uh, South Australian Fire and Emergency Services Commission, uh, and it's very deliberately written to protect life, property and environment in that order, uh, life being uh, the prominent um, thing that we're there to protect. Obviously we will protect assets, obviously we will protect the environment, but life, the prominence of life, uh, comes first and is the most important thing. Um, an overview of the CFS, we're a volunteer based organisation, effectively we've got about 15,000 people uh, in the CFS, about 13,000 firefighters uh, and then a number of uh, volunteers that provide their services to the community, their community, uh, through supporting us uh, in an, ad, in an uh, operational support or admin support role. And then we've got about 128 staff, um, that, uh, uh, 125 staff uh, that uh, uh, operate across um, the, the state. 434 brigades. Um, a brigade is a, a unit or a, a group of people that work together to protect their community. So there's 434 brigades uh, spread across South Australia. We attend about seven to 8,000 uh, incidents per year, um, ranging from bushfire, uh, but a, a not um, an overly well-known fact is that bushfire is only about one-third of what we actually do. Two-thirds of what we do is not bushfire. Two-thirds of what we do uh, involves um, structure fires, uh, involves road crashes, involves a range of other activities uh, that our people get involved in right across the state. As it says, motor vehicle accidents, um, road crash rescue, hazardous materials spills, uh, storm damage uh, and other special service incidents supporting uh, other agencies. The key message for today, the key message for South Australians this year uh, is to know your risk. Know the risk that you face uh, within where you live, where you work and where you travel. And whilst you might not live, work or travel uh, very often in bushfire prone areas, uh, people in South Australia must still know their risk and must know what to do uh, when a bushfire threatens them. Key risks uh, in South Australia. Bushfires uh, unfortunately can start and move extremely quickly, uh, very, very quickly. This fire is a fire that started uh, on an extreme fire weather day uh, just northwest of Gladstone uh, in the mid north uh, and moved. Gladstone is uh, this, there's the silos there for Gladstone, and the fire started down here. Um, this is facing south. Um, and moved very, very quickly in grasslands and threatened Gladstone um, very, very quickly, soon up, very soon after the fire started. So fires can move uh, very, very quickly. Um, not hundreds of kilometres an hour, but certainly to 18, 20, even up to 25 kilometres an hour in grasslands such as this. So that's quite, quite fast. The safest place for vulnerable people um, is always to be nowhere near a bushfire. Um, the safest place for all of us, not just vulnerable people, uh, is to be nowhere near bushfire. Now that's not always um, possible uh, to escape, uh, to be not where the bushfire is. Um, so we need a plan, obviously. Know your options. Uh, the options that are available to us um, in South Australia are many and varied. Uh, but people do have options and can uh, prepare themselves, uh, have a plan uh, and survive a bushfire. Leaving a bushfire prone area early is always the safest option. Uh, the uh, banners that we put out such as this uh, indicates your options that are available to you on the fire danger rating that's applicable uh, for the day. Uh, and leaving early on a catastrophic fire weather day uh, is always your safest option. Leaving early, um, preferably even the night before, uh, is your best option. Do not rely on electricity. Um, do not rely on landlines or even mobile phones 
uh, or mined water uh, during a bushfire. And things as simple as um, the garage door. The electric garage door, if the power goes off, won't work. It is possible to lift a garage door without power. Um, you can pull a lever and lift a door. It is possible, but people need to remember that. Simple things like that. Your electric pump that provides water to the house uh, won't work if there's no power. Um, so there's no guarantee that there will be power available uh, during a bushfire. Telephones, uh, as have been indicated, mobile phones and landlines uh, may well fail as well, as well as water supplies. So we need a plan uh, and know our options. Now, as I said before, with 434 brigades spread across the state, we've got about 600, uh, 670 thereabout fire trucks um, spread across the state. And the Metropolitan Fire Service have got 25 or 30 trucks available in the city, um, available in the city area. Even if we put all of them together and took them up into the hills, even if we get every truck in South Australia and took them up into the hills, there would still not be enough fire trucks to have a fire truck at the end of every street, let alone at the, end, at the entrance of every, uh, of every house. Uh, so um, a much misunderstood um, thing, and perhaps we are sometimes too successful, but much misunderstood is that when I get a fire, there will be a fire truck and there'll be a helicopter overhead and there'll be an aeroplane fighting this fire. Yes, then there probably will be. Yes, we will make every effort to get as many trucks, as many aircraft there to fight the fire. There's no guarantee that there'll be enough trucks, do the sums, there's more than 600 houses in the Mount Lofty Ranges, there's more than 600 houses in one suburb, let alone um, in the whole of the Mount Lofty Ranges, for us to have a truck at every, at every property. So the reality is we can't guarantee a fire truck uh, at every house to protect every house. Don't wait for somebody to tell you that it's time to leave. Um, last minute evacuations are the most deadly um, option uh, to people. Um, people are panicked, rushed, um, uh, their options are limited by, by way of uh, ex escape routes. Uh, their options are limited in, by way of the places they can go. Um, and uh, a very, very deadly option is the, the um, late evacuation. So um, early, leave early on a bad day uh, or leave early uh, as soon as, um, if, that's, if, you're, if that's your plan, as soon as you're aware of a fire in your area. Radiant uh, heat is the killer uh, during a fire. Smoke and embers uh, make life really uncomfortable and really, really difficult uh, and are killers as well. But the main killer is radiant heat from the fire. Radiant heat uh, is the heat that you feel from a radiator, from an electric radiator, um, or from the back of this um, uh, projector that's getting quite warm at the moment. Uh, that's radiant heat. That's the killer. It travels straight um, and it will not go through things like solid brick walls. It will not go through fences, solid fences, uh, metal fences. So anything that between you and radiant heat will protect you from that radiant heat. Still be smoky. It'll still be dark. It'll still be very, very noisy. And there'll be lots of smoke and embers. But radiant heat is the one that uh, people need to protect themselves from. So in a solid, well-prepared structure uh, is the best place to be uh, if you're in fact uh, caught in a bushfire. Our message this year, as I started out by saying, is prepare, act and survive. Be prepared, do the work, um, have a plan and then on the day or the day before, act uh, on that plan uh, and then on the day, do what you can to uh, help each other um, help your, your, um, your people and each other uh, to survive a bushfire. Thank you.